Good morning, Bruce. And how are you this fine morning? Rare it to go. Rare it to go. We're the Mastiffs again, heading up the Musakala Wadi. We're going north for four Ks. They're going to attempt to set up uh, a new patrolling base uh, and operate out of it for two days. If they think they can build one up there, then they're going to try to build one. But this is basically um, a test run to see um, how much incoming it gets um, and how badly the Taliban react to it. Musakala is protected from enemy attack by a ring of patrol bases. This is the first time they've ever attempted to establish a foothold in the northern part of the green zone the heart of enemy territory. To get there, the company are traveling north to a drop-off point at the edge of the wadi. Because of the risk of IEDs, it's taken us one hour to travel four kilometers. Do you think the, uh, the Taliban know that we're already here? I would be very surprised if they hadn't uh, seen us leaving the front gate of camp. Um, so there's probably somebody on a motorbike somewhere or somebody out on the ground with a communication system telling commanders you know, where we are and what we're doing. So the door's open. Cheers, mate. Right, be back. We're dangerously exposed as we cross the open ground. Soldiers listening to Taliban radio traffic called ICOM chatter have heard we're in the Taliban sights. Zero Alpha, Roger. Uh, just waiting for three zero call signs to drop off. Once they're uh, uh, secure at the drop off point, well, they'll head off. Uh, be aware, can you get the Maverick uh, call signs uh, from my uh, OC we need to uh, sort the comms out? Well, just tell them if they've refilled their radio with a new fill, our, all of our radios are not on a new fill. We don't have that new fill. There's a problem with the radios. Huh? They're, they're going to send it to QRF with a new fill. We're going to remain here. I'm pretty unhappy with that, actually. That means we're static at this location. Uh, we tell them we'll push down south and we'll give them an RV. In fact, tell them to fuck off. Yes, sir. Tell them to fuck off and sort out. Do they know how long it takes to refill fucking 30 radios? Do you want to use those as that words? Well, yeah, not. There we go. We're now under attack. The longer we remain static, the more vulnerable we are. The Taliban have zeroed in on our position with mortars. We need to find cover urgently. We're making our way steadily now up to these uh, compounds. However, there is a big problem with the radios. Um, and hopefully when we get to the compounds and lay up, we'll be able to sort that problem out. This area has seen a lot of fighting over the last few weeks, so most of the compounds are deserted. So, Nick, what's the score? We've got a platoon up there at the moment, providing a, a bit of security up to the north. Um, and then this call sign uh, and the one behind it, and they're going to insert into their uh, compounds. There's a risk that the Taliban have left booby traps or are lying in wait. need to check the rooms to see if, if there's anybody here also, if there are any booby traps, any IEDs. And what the guys are now doing are trying to make sure they've got arcs on the roof, put some kind of protection around themselves so that they can fire from uh, relative safety should they be attacked. Directly west, there's a big tree line, only get 50 to 100 metres. On the eastern side, there's a fucking run right up there, get about 200, 300 metres. I'm happy that 6 nine's got pretty good arcs from this location. I don't think it's going to be big enough uh, to... Uh, call signs, so uh, you're going to have to move in to uh, co-locate yourself with uh, 3 zero in compound uh, 6766, over. D Company is split into three platoons based in neighbouring compounds. 2-0 are in compound 69, 1-0 are in compound 66, and 3-0 
are in compound 67. They're acting as bait, hoping the enemy will open fire and give away their location. I think a lot of people will find it hard to understand just how close the enemy are here. Mm -hmm. How close have some of the contacts been? Um, I was certainly some of the ones that uh, you were involved in the other day. That was down to, uh, you know, 30 metres probably tops. Uh, so it literally is in this ground, you know, going around the corner of a building, uh, getting to a gap of a maze field, and there they are, um, shooting at you. Um, so, yeah, very close, very exciting. How many injuries have you had so far? Can you count? We've had five battlefield injuries. Uh, getting wounded on the battlefield is all about 90% professionalism, doing your job the best you can, getting into cover and all those sort of things. And there's that 10% luck piece. Um, uh, and, and fortunately, you know, we've been lucky in that we've only had five. We could have had a lot more. But you personally, how much have you missed Jenny, your wife, and, your, and you've got three kids? Yes, I have, yeah. Darcy, who's six, little yeah, girl. Yeah. Uh, I've got William, who's four, and I've got Imogen, who's one. You know, when you think about it, your family, it can be pretty depressing. And all you want to do is just be back with them and looking after them. And every day, I, I think about my family, have a quick look at the photographs that I've got, and then, you know, park it away. A separate unit has accompanied Delta to encourage the Taliban to give away their position. Zoe, thanks for agreeing to talk to us. We're in a compound in enemy territory, um, and you and your cohorts are just about to put a loudspeaker on, aren't you? Yeah. yeah. Can you tell us what the point of that is? We're going to say messages over the loudspeaker to the Taliban, basically. Either come and fight us if you think you're hard enough, go home, um, if, if you're going to fight us, we're going to beat you. In an operation like now, uh, where we're trying to establish uh, enemy force numbers, uh, yeah. dispositions and locations, this is a good way of, of uh, goading them. It's to bait. Out. It's bait. She uses bait. Yeah, yeah. yeah, taunting. Yeah. Yeah. It's taunting. Yeah. And does it normally work? Does it normally taunt them? Yeah, Always. especially when we get the pipes <laughs> on. It's not as if they're scared of fighting, is it? They are going to yeah. fight. They are going to make contact, probably, That's what we want with us. To no, but we're already here in a situation yeah. where they're going to make contact with us. Does it help by goading them further on? Yeah, it does. Yeah, How? definitely. Is this more specific, for example, where we are right now? We don't know exactly where the Taliban are, and we encourage them yeah. to open fire on us so we can see where their positions are. And we've got teams going out who will right. then be able to outflank. But isn't it highly sensitive, Zoe, to be doing this during a time of Ramadan? Um, well, you kind of have to do be a bit culturally sensitive. You know, if this inter it did interrupt the call to prayer, yeah. uh, it's not a huge issue. Uh, people are generally quite flexible out here. No, yeah. Yeah. You see that? It's an RPG. Can you see? No. I'm fine. We started goading the Taliban Best about you can get someone. About half get a minute ago, energy. and consequently oh, there's been steel, okay. small arms fire and RPGs coming over the compound. So uh, the are yeah, you think you're hard, hard enough approach well. seems to actually um, get a reaction, um, funnily enough. Where, where was it coming didn't, in? See, didn't see the RPG firing point, but the sound certainly came from that direction, the clearing in line with these two telegraph poles. There's been small arms fire and an RPG fired over the compound. The, the guys at the moment, Joe's down there trying to work out exactly where he came from. Well, Wednesday night, his RPG was fired from the track to the north, but to the west hand side of the track. Right, Slaven. Slaven. Yeah, can you go and tell the sound commanders to continue with sound commandering? Fight. Continue being the same commander. It doesn't work. We've got a slight problem with the machine now, it's broken. So they're trying to fix it. We're actually going back to playing off an iPod at the minute because that cable's knackered. Oh, uh, right. So we're going for an iPod now, then, yeah, to get yeah. some bagpipe yeah. music? Yeah. Cancel, I've got it. <laughs> I'm such a fucking idiot. Here we go. Not our finest hour, in many ways. We've got eyes on a potential firing point in compound 9-4. Then we'll be engaging that with mortars over. He's got mortars teed up. Just 9-4, uh, 9 81mm nine mortars have been called in from Roshan Tower to target the enemy. But this is not without risk. Uh, Zero Alpha, Roger. They've left the uh, compound uh, man in positions. Uh, Roger out. 
The problem is we already have um, one of the call signs out on the ground doing a patrol, so they have to make sure definitely they know where uh, one zero is before they launch those mortars. And the worry is that, you know, we could call in friendly fire, have a blue on blue situation. <laughs> That's our roof, yeah? We're engaging. What you got, mate? All right. 100 metres, you've got a, a collapsed wall with a tree hanging over it. Yeah, yeah, you just there, yeah? That was the firing point. So just there, yeah? Yeah, just there, yeah. Uh, we'll just keep an eyes on here over uh, onto the wall uh, with the LMG gunner at the minute. Yeah, that's Pollock, he can shoot. That's right. Man down! Man down, man down! Uh, we need a medic up on the roof and we need uh, more firepower. We need another gunner. Good, Pollock. Man down! Fuck okay, we need a medic. Man down! Boys, we need a medic up here! Where is it, Ross? Where is it? Up there, up there, mate. We've still got shots coming in. Uh, we're going to run out of tape. Uh, enemy just there. Got a man taken around to his arm. I think it might be Pollock. I hope not. We're trying to reload the uh, Minami now, and they're covering for with the SA-80. Pollock receives emergency treatment and a shot of morphine from the field medic. How are you feeling, mate? We wee bit sore now. I guess that'll be the, the ricochet. But yeah. <laughs> you're taking a ricochet to your left arm, yeah? Yeah. Oh. Andy, could you give us a sit rep, mate? Have you yeah. dealt with him? Uh, basically, mechanism wound, obviously the gunshot wound um, to his left forearm and things. It's a ricochet. There's three ricochet bits that's come off, obviously, where the rounds either hit the wall. There's one underneath, one on top, one around. It's yeah. got a full range of movement in the fingers as well. It's got a good capillary refill, basically meaning the blood's getting available to go right. back and forward. We've put the IV access so we can get fluids into him and get uh, if anything does go wrong or anything yeah. happens. Because he's walking wounded, everything's fine about him, OK? He's uh, airways clear, his breathing's good, circulation, yeah. he's got a radial pulse in there. Yeah. Still got a radial pulse. That again, eh? And that's pretty much treatment given, first of all, Justin. So, Mr Pollock, you feel like a lucky man at the moment? Fucking hit the eye. Yeah? Yeah. I didn't even realise, I passed by about 100 rounds. Yeah, yeah, we were behind you, mate. Well done, you did a fantastic job.